morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone's Oz and today another detailed forecast update coming your way. We're going to be talking about showers and storms expected over parts of southeastern Queensland and into northeastern New South Wales before a thunderstorm outbreak takes hold into the later parts of next week. We're also going to take a look at a tropical weather update, a tropical weather forecast as well and take a look at some warm temperatures that are expected to extend across the west of the nation and then penetrate further east as the week goes on. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please you can consider subscribing. We're getting closer and closer to 20,000 and all support is much appreciated. So heading over into the southeast of Queensland and the northeast of New South Wales, I get a comment every single day about how this channel is so focused on these two parts of Australia, but right now that is where the significant weather is happening and that's where the attention is going to be. So I'm going to break that down for you right now, that significant weather that we have been talking about. Uh, recently we've had a low pressure system move through New South Wales, it's now in the Tasman Sea. It's bringing some cool temperatures along the New South Wales coastline, but that's not what we're interested in. We've got showers and storms expected to develop throughout the course of this week. Now, warm temperatures are already developing across the surface trough across parts of Queensland. That's going to provide a favourable environment for some thunderstorms to fire up over the coming couple of days. We could be seeing a few showers and storms develop between the Roma and Charleville sort of area today outside of Tambo and Rolleston. A few thunderstorms are possible later on this afternoon and evening, but they will be very isolated and definitely non-severe as well. We're really not expecting anything substantial from these thunderstorms develop, developing along that surface trough. Tomorrow it will be a little bit more interesting. A few showers expected to develop along the central Queensland coastline, most likely not thunderstorms however, but between Mackay and Bundaberg a couple of millimetres is possible at a few locations from a few showers expected to develop tomorrow evening. Wednesday will be a quiet day, really not expecting anything in the way of showers or thunderstorms across Queensland, but that temperature is just going to keep on building as this low pressure trough really establishes itself in central Queensland. I mean, take Take a look at this long reach going down to an overnight minimum of 28 degrees on Thursday morning. It's going to be blisteringly hot there and under the influence of that low pressure system you can see the tops easily surpass 40 degrees before midday on Thursday. Quite a warm one indeed and continuing to rise to 42 degrees for long reach on Thursday. Now you bet that's going to fire up a few thunderstorms and they do develop around the Rolleston, uh, Roma and Tambo area. In this little thunderstorm alley that we have across the, the central parts of Queensland inland from Rockhampton and this is where a lot of thunderstorms fire up, especially this time of the year, and we're seeing it again on Thursday afternoon. Now, just the way these thunderstorms are going to develop along a surface trough with some very favourable upper-level environmental conditions, we are talking about the risk of severe thunderstorms, particularly outside the communities around Tarum and then Biloela. We could be seeing a few severe thunderstorms fire up in this general area. Most likely, these are going to be pulse thunderstorms um, as they do fire up, and then uh, later on to the afternoon at around 4 or 5 p.m., a couple of these pulse thunderstorms may start rotating and then we get the supercell risk which is where those severe thunderstorm risks do come in and that's where we talk about heavy rainfall, large hailstones, damaging winds and the isolated risk for some tornadoes. Now if there is any spot across Queensland that can fire out tornadoes it is this little area of central Queensland outside of Rolleston and Tarum. Typically they get a couple of tornadoes in this area of Queensland every single year and it looks like Thursday dare I say might be a favourable day for a few tornadoes to fire up. Just looking at these thunderstorms here there's not going to be many inhibiting factors in the environment and there's certainly not going to be too many thunderstorms where the environment just becomes saturated and powerful thunderstorms can't make the most of their set environment. So I reckon the chance of some strong thunderstorms which could funnel out a couple of uh, little rotating clouds that resemble tornadoes, nothing strong, nothing crazy scary or anything like that, is certainly possible on Thursday. Of course that comes with the risk of damaging winds, large hailstones and heavy rainfall as well. That goes without saying for severe thunderstorms but they are built for that in this part of Queensland so it really isn't that much of a risk until we get very dangerous severe thunderstorms. And unless tornadoes do fire out, I don't think these thunderstorms are going to be classifiable as very dangerous. Now, later on in the afternoon and into the early evening at around 7 or 8 p.m., these thunderstorms are going to head for the central Queensland coastline, specifically around Gladstone, Agnes Water, and Rockhampton, reaching Gladstone and Agnes Water by around 7 or 8 p.m. with a couple of heavy showers possible there. And then a few downpours outside of Rockhampton also possible, and a couple of showers extending north up towards uh, Ogmore and Marunba further up the central Queensland coastline. It looks like the rainfall keeps out of the Sunshine coastline as well and around the Gold Coast. A couple of showers still possible down there as this surface trough moves through on Thursday night, but it doesn't look like there's going to be anything crazy there. So Thursday, we are talking about a bit of a thunderstorm outbreak, especially into the afternoon and evening hours with potentially severe thunderstorms outside of Rolleston, Tarum and Tambo. This is going to be something that's going to get a lot of uh, weather coverage along uh, not just this channel, but around uh, Facebook as well. So you will definitely hear about this little thunderstorm outbreak 
that we are expecting to develop because the environment is very, very favorable indeed. Now take a look at convective available potential energy values. The fuel that is available for thunderstorms to fire up, you can see pretty high values expected. When we start talking about these orange colors, which is about 2000 joules per kilogram, an arbitrary number, but the colors do say it. Orange I class as high value, specifically for this time of the year, we are talking about a lot of energy in the environment for these severe thunderstorms to make the most of. And then later on in the night, I mean, just take a look at this. A lot of energy is going to be available for severe thunderstorms at around 2 or 3 p.m. a little bit later than that. And then down into the uh, southeastern corner of Queensland, there's also going to be a huge amount of energy available for thunderstorms to fire up. And because the environment's not necessarily going to be that favorable, the winds are just going to be too light for thunderstorms to really take hold. And it looks like it's going to be too cold as well. But regardless of that, just because there's so much energy available, we are talking about a risk of thunderstorms firing up Thursday night into early Friday morning along the southeastern corner of Queensland between Brisbane and the Gold Coast. Non-severe thunderstorms at that, the environment's just too unfavorable for severe thunderstorms to take a hold of. But just considering the amount of energy that is in the atmosphere for thunderstorms to make the most of, I reckon Thursday afternoon and evening, we could be seeing a few thunderstorms fire up around the Gold Coast, more sort of into the northeast of New South Wales, but a few storm cells there are nonetheless possible. And also Thursday afternoon, we're talking about thunderstorms firing up across the uh, central New, uh, New South Wales coastline outside of Newcastle and Tyree and up towards the Barrington Tops. And a few severe thunder cells are certainly possible Thursday night. Slow moving, heavy downpours look to be the main threat with some large hailstones embedded in them and some supercells outside of Newcastle also look to be possible. A few showers also possible along the western uh, suburbs of Sydney out towards Penrith and Black, uh, Bankstown. We could be seeing a few showers and storms out there. And a few showers and storms also extending as far south as Naruma and Marimbula as well on the southeastern corner of New South Wales. So it is going to be a pretty widespread thunderstorm outbreak, all things considered. The main story for severe storms, certainly outside of Tarum and uh, Rolleston in the Queensland side of things, but a few little pockets outside of New South Wales, uh, Newcastle specifically, we could be seeing fire up some severe thunderstorms as well. It's going to be a pretty widespread event, all things considered. Uh, a lot of energy in the environment for thunderstorms to make the most of, and it looks like Thursday is going to be a very conducive day for thunderstorm genesis. And you can see early into Friday morning with those uh, convective available potential energy values, it looks like we do get a storm front moving through the northeast of New South Wales and then into the southeast of Queensland as well. A few thunderstorms possible to wake up to on Friday morning at around 4 or 5 a.m. The forecast on this little round here is still a little bit uncertain, but if I was to put a finger on it, I reckon it would just be some heavy rainfall moving through with some embedded lightning strikes, maybe some straight line damaging winds as well. I don't think there'll be large hailstones. Small hailstones do look possible across areas of the southeast of Queensland, but it doesn't look like it's going to be a very nasty storm front coming through. Just going to be a pretty rude thing to wake up to on Friday morning. Once they get themselves out to see though, I mean, just take a look at this. The forecast models go to town with this little squall front. A really blowing it up into quite a dramatic thunderstorm outbreak out to sea and that's just because it's going to be that there's just so much favorable energy out there for thunderstorms to make the most of and that is so typical for this time of the year where we see these low pressure systems and these surface troughs even if they're weak they just because of the favorable conditions along Queensland and New South Wales especially into the interiors we've just talked about they just blow up thunderstorms like to no tomorrow and we can see some pretty gnarly storms out of it and that's exactly what we're seeing on the forecast models with this little weather event. Now just to cap this discussion on this little weather event off over a 24 hour period between Thursday morning and Friday evening. Some good rainfall accumulations are possible, specifically up in the Queensland side of things where under the right thunder cell up to 50 millimetres is possible specifically as you get closer towards the central Queensland coastline outside of Gladstone and Agnes Water. That's where the heaviest falls are going to be. Inland the rainfall is going to be much more hit and miss. There will be places that pick up some good accumulations but for the most part a lot of places are going to miss out. And then down in the New South Wales side of things as well we're expecting higher precipitation storm modes and as such rainfall accumulations outside of Newcastle and Tyree are going to be substantially higher than those ones that are comparative from storms in Queensland and that's where we're talking about widespread accumulations between 10 and 50 millimeters I know that's a really big scope of uncertainty but we are talking about thunderstorms and thunderstorms about five days away a couple of years ago we wouldn't be able to make an accurate forecast on thunderstorms up to five days away so the fact that we can do that now is very impressive and a testament to how far weather technology has come uh, and yeah it really does 
does look like I'm very certain with these thunderstorms as well, especially in Queensland and also in New South Wales. It looks like this forecast here is going to be very accurate and the storms are going to play out pretty much exactly as um, the forecast is suggesting. Now, just given the nature of the squall line that's expected to move through the southeast of Queensland and the northeast of New South Wales, I don't think there's going to be an awful lot of rainfall. There will be places that get up towards 30 or 40 millimetres, but for the most part, most places are going to get between 10 and 20 millimetres, so not an awful lot of rainfall. And once you get outside of the immediate area of the Gold Coast, even north of about Coomera, I reckon the rainfall is going to be very hit and miss, very unpredictable, and I don't think Brisbane is going to get anything of it either. That's a long-winded forecast discussion for Queensland. You thought we were done, but we are far from it. Later on this week, we've got some thunderstorms expected to develop, specifically Sunday and into Monday next week. We're going to see another surface drop extend across Northern Territory, Queensland, and then into New South Wales. And under the influence of this system, we're going to see a very favourable environment for more thunderstorms to fire up. Not only that, it's going to be blisteringly hot as well. Sunday, once again, a lot of locations in central Queensland, long reach going down to 27 degrees overnight for Sunday morning. It's going to be a warm start and it's going to be an even warmer day. I mean, take a look at this temperatures by midday already into the low 40s for a lot of locations in the Northern Territory and then into Queensland it is high 30s and above for most locations. Sunday afternoon another outbreak of thunderstorms possible across parts of central Queensland, central southern Queensland, specifically south of Charleville and Roma. I think this forecast here is bound to change. I reckon we'll see a big backflip in the forecast at some point in the next couple of days and this is something that I want to be talking about so probably more sort of Thursday or Friday morning but at this time this is more of a heads up. You can see these thunderstorms can continue to develop throughout Sunday and we see a big squall line develop across parts of Queensland and then into New South Wales on uh, Sunday night into early Monday morning. Now this squall line does naturally weaken out as the night goes on but we're still expecting thunderstorms to be on the uh, extremities of this weather system as it moves across Queensland and then into uh, parts of the uh, southeastern corner of Queensland around the Brisbane area and the Gold Coast by Monday morning and a few showers and storms possible throughout there to wake up to on Monday at this point but it, again it's a pretty hard sell forecast all things considered. The majority of the rainfall will be Sunday afternoon and outside of communities such as Charleville and Roma with some severe thunderstorms expected on the northern extremities of this outbreak here up towards Rolleston and Tambo in that just general area where Queensland seems to get a heap of severe thunderstorms at this time of the year. Now Monday afternoon as well it's going to be no different a few thunderstorms developing along a surface trough across parts of central Queensland between Longreach down towards the immediate southeastern corners of Queensland around the Brisbane and Toowoomba area and once again that runs through Tambo, Rolleston in June that's sort of area uh, with some severe thunderstorms possible in that general area as well. And then throughout uh, Monday, these thunderstorms do just naturally peter out as the night goes on. Tuesday, not, nothing really expected and similar story for Wednesday as well. Nothing really expected across central parts of Queensland. So we certainly have our work cut out for us in terms of weather tracking for the next couple of days across Queensland and into New South Wales with two separate severe thunderstorm outbreaks, one on Thursday and then one Saturday, Sunday and Monday next week. And a bit of rainfall is also expected from this weather event here. You can see from Saturday afternoon to Tuesday afternoon, some good falls are possible, specifically on the New South Wales side of things where the heaviest falls are going to be on the southern side of this system where the low pressure system is attached to. Rainfall accumulations could exceed 50 millimetres over a three-day period, so we will keep a close eye on things. That is some good rainfall there, and much needed rainfall as well. However, into Queensland, not only is it too early to tell exactly how much rainfall is expected for what locations, it's also more so coming from thunderstorms, which means it's naturally going to be a lot more unpredictable. So this is more of a heads up. Uh, for these severe thunderstorms that are expected across Queensland. Not so much a forecast, but I'll be able to give a very detailed update on this later on this week, definitely by this weekend. So make sure you are subscribed and tuned in for that. It's going to be an interesting one indeed. Now, we've talked plenty about thunderstorms and tropical weather across parts of Queensland and into New South Wales as well. Just a brief look at rainfall across Australia in the next 10 days. It really isn't anything that stands out for me. The west coast of Tasmania is still receiving some good falls over the next 10 days. It's pretty typical for this time of year. The rainfall doesn't really pipe down until the true summer months down there of December, January and February. So the rainfall there, nothing out of the ordinary, but still some good falls are possible. Into Western Australia, it looks like a widespread uh, area of thunderstorms expected to continue firing up across the Pilbara on a couple of nights next week, and that's going to be under the influence of some temperatures we'll get to in just a second. The tropics, no standout area, specifically in Queensland. There's no, nothing really in the way of substantial rainfall coming through, but you can already start to see the top end of Cape York up towards Thursday Island, Weeper, that sort of area. Rainfall now starting to pipe up pretty consistently. This is the first sign to me that the wet season is very close. This monsoon trough is very close to coming further down the coast and funneling rainfall into tropical far northern Queensland. It's not that far 
away, guys. So make sure you are ready for some tropical rainfall. It's only, it's probably within a month at this point, I reckon, uh, or maybe just over. Certainly sometime in the next six weeks, we're going to see some heavy rainfall across the far north of Queensland. That is very exciting indeed. Now, across parts of northern Western Australia as well and into the Northern Territory, more showers and thunderstorms expected over the next 10 days. They had a pretty good thunderstorm this morning as well, leaving rainfall accumulations up towards 70 millimetres outside of the Adelaide River Dam. So some good falls expected to continue up there. And yeah, just all round thunderstorms for the Northern Territory and into Western Australia, typical for this time of the year. But again, some pretty heavy falls have been reported. That wet season rainfall well and truly set in now for some locations across parts of WA and into the Northern Territory. And it's just a matter of weeks until it gets actually really heavy. Now, in terms of temperatures as well, I did say that I was going to talk about that. So let's give a brief update on it right now. We're going to see a West Coast trough develop along the West Coast, surprise, surprise, of Western Australia over the next couple of days. And that's going to bring temperatures up. You can already see across parts of Northern Australia, temperatures on Wednesday afternoon, well into the uh, early 40s across much of WA, parts of the Northern Territory, and even into Queensland as well, up to 42 degrees between Mount Isa and Matabara and Longreach. Warm temperatures expected there. This West Coast trough is really going to promote some warm temperatures as well down the West Coast on uh, Thursday as well. Temperatures expected to go into the mid to high 20s along the southwest corner of Western Australia, potentially uh, early 30s for Perth. It's going to be a beautiful day there. And then into the mid to high 30s for parts of the Wheat Belt and into the Murchison region and of course 40s for parts of uh, the Pilbara. And even into the Kimberley as well outside of Fitzroy Crossing, a blisteringly hot 44 degrees. That's probably going to end up being the state's hottest location for the next couple of days by the looks of things. Uh, very warm indeed. Continues to warm up on Friday with temperatures outside of Broome and Roebuck heading for 45. Saturday as well very warm indeed outside of Marble Bar. Temperatures heading for 45. Potentially up towards 46 for some locations as well. And anything sort of above 46 even for Western Australia, I class as being pretty hot. That's where we start to see temperatures exceed 8 or 9 degrees Celsius above the average, especially for this time of year. So anything above 46 degrees is kind of hot and pretty uncomfortable for pretty much everyone, uh, even up there where they built to handle that kind of heat. I reckon anything above sort of 46 is pretty uncomfortable. And then this West Coast trough develop, develops once again into the early parts of next week. Monday, we're expecting temperatures to go into the mid 30s for some locations along the southwest. Uh, north of Perth, up towards Gingin and those areas, up towards 34, 35, very warm indeed. And then Tuesday as well, even warmer. It looks like Perth might even get close to 40 degrees on Tuesday, with a top of 37 expected by this forecast and some suggestions up the coast that we could be seeing 40 degree days outside of Geraldton and uh, Durian, uh, not Durian Bay, Calbarry rather, uh, and temperatures well into the mid 40s for some locations into the Gascoigne region. Very, very warm indeed. It looks like, just taking a look at this forecast here, that the West Coast trough continues to build on Wednesday. And take a look at this on this forecast for the 30th of October, 40 degrees Celsius for Perth, blisteringly hot. Now, I doubt this is going to materialize how the forecast models are suggesting, but it is certainly possible for this time of the year. 40 degrees would be very, very very, very warm for October. I think that might actually be record hot if we get above 40 degrees, but it is that time of the year where we start to see things warm up, and I bet people across Perth are just dying for this heat. So this is good to see right now on the forecast, but it is going to get quite interesting indeed, and we're going to have to keep checking back on this over the coming couple of days, and it's going to be warm overnight as well. Now, this forecast update has really dragged out. It's certainly one of the longest ones that I've made over the last couple of months. I uh, thank you for watching uh, the video to this point as well. If I've left anything unanswered, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. And if you've got any feedback as well, please do leave it in the comment section down below, and I'll try and get back to as many people as I can throughout the course of today. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching the video to this point. Your support lately has been much appreciated. Special shout out to the channel sponsors. Could not run this show without them. Again, thank you so much to all of the names on screen right now. But that is all for me today, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.